Land for joining me. Thank you for joining us with Drinks with Tiffany Beth. And I am, of course, your favorite with the wild child, Tiffany Beth. And as always, I am enjoying a fabulous beverage, but I can't share it with you because they're not a sponsor. So if you want to sponsor Drinks with Tiffany Beth and you're a fantastic adult beverage company, or if it's a regular beverage company, you can email me at dtmwicked at yahoo.com. I have a really kick-ass show for you tonight. As you all know, I have tattoos. I love tattoos. Because you know what? They're more than tattoos. They're art. They're a statement. They're a story. And one of my favorite shows is Ink Master. And I love how they say people aren't, you know, just, you know, a client. They're canvases, because that's what we are, we're blank canvases waiting for permanent art and stories to be placed upon our bodies. And so I'm a huge fan of, of Ink Masters. And as we all know, last season was Ink Master Rivals. And I have the famous Robbie Ribal joining me tonight from Ink Master Rivals. He's going to talk about his family. He's going to talk about how he got started in tattooing. He's going to give us the down low on his studio and the new things he has going on in his life. And, and people, don't, don't fret. He's going to give us the nitty-gritty on everything that goes on behind the scenes of Ink Master Rivals. And maybe we'll even find out tonight if Emily Delgado is really just that much of a bitch. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out. <laughs> you got to know that question's going to come. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one of the bigger questions I get. So I'll stay with it. <laughs> um, as you know, that's Robbie. He's going to be joining us in just a couple minutes. He's such a kick-ass guy, and I'm so glad he could be with us tonight. And I'm just looking forward to having him on. And someday I plan on having some art done by him once he either gets up here or we get down there. So but before we bring on my awesome, awesome guest, <clears throat> I got a couple shout-outs. First of all, I'm going to be broadcasting live on the 21st of May, Bowling Hills, Iowa. And it's going to be awesome, and you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to be doing a little investigation. As you know, we, we I hate to use the word dabble, but we partake in the paranormal a little bit here and there because it's such a fun thing. And now uh, we're going to be at Rolling Hills Asylum in East Bethany, New York, 10 minutes from, it's funny, it's 10 minutes from everywhere, and yet it's still in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's a geographical oddity. But it's uh, 10 minutes from Major Airport, 10 minutes from Batista, New York. And Sharon, our very good friend, who's a sponsor, um, is opening it up to us, and we're going to do broadcast. You can come, and you can investigate with us. Just go to www.rollinghillsasylum.com. Fill out a form. It's about $50 for a ticket, and it's a captive hunt. And you, we have free run of the whole place. And we're going to be broadcasting live. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be there. Some other people are going to be there. It's going to be great. So come out and join us. That is May 23rd. Of, yes, May 23rd. It's a Saturday. I am traveled. Um, actually, I'm starstruck because I have Robbie Ripple. Oh, so I'll be on in just a few minutes again, like I said. Also, the Caring Coaching Center. Everybody wants to start new. Everybody wants to be healthy inside and out. And you know what? It's always nice when you have a little bit of guidance. And Karen Kennedy, who is the CEO of the Caring Coaching Center, she's amazing. And what she'll do is if you look over her site and email her, go to www.thecaringcoachingcenter.com, look over her site, email her, and you'll get a free 50-minute health history consultation. And what that will do, it will help her help design a plan specifically to meet your needs. So if you want to lose weight and kind of get your life in order and just want to help your lifestyle, she'll help you do that. Whatever you need, that's going to support. So go to www.thecaringcoachingcenter.com. Also, 76inc.com, awesome T-shirts. If you go to our store, you can go and purchase a Drinks with Tiffany Beth or DTM with a radio T-shirt from 76inc.com. Awesome, awesome designer, quality products, quality merchandise. Absolutely love them. So if you ever need any work done, go to www.76inc.com. Order T-shirts to them. Amazing. Deadly Grounds Coffee. If you're a coffee person, I am a coffee kind of store. Amazing coffee. Delicious. The full body. they got light. they got flavored. And it's really, really amazing. So go to www.deadlygroundscoffee.com. Order yourself some awesome Joe today. You won't regret it. And also, Psychic Medium, Claire White, and Jackie Bowling. She is an amazing, gifted person of the gifted site. I'm not a big psychic person as you are. I've said a million times. I'm really not, but I truly feel she's gifted. 
And if you go to www.dtunwicked.com, click on the sponsor page and go to Jackie Bowling and Clairvoyant Medium, get a spiritual content, get a reading, maybe get questions answered about past loved ones or maybe your future that you're wondering. She has a gift of sight. She has a gift of voice. And you're, you know, you're going to be so pleased. So go to www.dtmwickedradio.com, click on the sponsor page, and find Jackie Bowling. It's, it's awesome. You'll be very happy that you did. And tell her, Tiffany Beth, your favorite Wicked Wild House, sent you. So that's all we have right now. Listen for August, because August we're going to have some events coming up. We might be at Pennhurst. We might be at some film and music fest. Listen up. Come join us. Come meet us. Come see us and hang out with us. And I'm also going to have some more kick-ass guests on my show, and I can't wait to reveal them to you. It's going to be epic. So without further ado, my guest has been waiting ever so patiently, and he has been so gracious to come on the show. How are you, Mr. Robbie Ripall? I'm doing great. How are you? I am fantastic. It's getting warmer in New York. Thank Jesus. I no longer want to kill myself when I go outside because it's too freaking cold to feel my body. It's a good day. <laughs> yep. We don't have that problem in Florida. <laughs> and this is the end of the conversation because once people start bragging about how good the weather is, I just lose all interest. I just, no. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. No. So you, you're, that, that, that can't talk. Starstruck, sorry. Um, <laughs> so you not only are a, a tattoo artist, you're a family man, you're a shop owner, you're a lot of things. How did you get involved in becoming an artist? Um, well, I I was born into it pretty much. When I was young, my dad did tattoos, and um, I was really just in love with it uh, from the time from the time I really found it or saw it or was able to be a part of it. I mean, I was always I was always the, the, the pain in the ass little kid bopping around the shop asking questions and stuff. And uh, I think my dad finally got tired of me asking questions. And around 12 years old, he gave me, uh, you know, the start to my informal apprenticeship. And um, oddly enough, by the time I was 16, I was tattooing as a professional. Uh, and I fucking sucked. I ruined so many people. That yeah. was terrible. But um, uh, you know, it, it took a long time to get better with it, and you know, the, the whole the whole craft of tattooing taught me how to draw. Taught me a lot. It taught me everything I know about business. Taught me a lot about life. So uh, it's been a fun ride the whole way through. That's funny. Now, like, did you self teach yourself every aspect of tattooing? Because Honestly, and, and we're going to jump into Ink Master a little later, but before I watched Ink Master, I mean, I had tattoos before then, but it's amazing when you see all the different variables involved in a tattoo that I didn't even think of. It kind right. of made me feel a little dumb, um, not knowing them because they're really important when you get down to brass tacks. Did you, like, self-teach yourself every kind of dimension of tattooing? Um, well, I mean, my father taught me, you know, most of it. Uh, mm -hmm. He taught me the, the basics. And then as far as, like, you know, just experience, the, the school of hard knocks, I guess you could call it, uh, <laughs> fucking up a lot, you know, doing the wrong thing to realize, oh, man, I should do that other thing that those people have told me to do or that book told me to do, you know. But it's just, there is a lot of, there's a lot of self-teaching that goes along, and I still learn daily. So, um, you know, one of the best things about the teaching is learning from others. You know, you can you can really learn a lot in this industry if you, if you make the right connection. Absolutely. Now, before you get into the industry, do you realize it's, it's a lot smaller of a community than you maybe had thought before? Uh, driven toward the same goal of getting somewhere in tattooing. So, you know, we share our work and give and, and take critiques and all grow together. So, you know, that, that's like part of it, but yeah, it's a very small community. It, the world is a small place the more you travel it. Um, so, you know, the, the more people you run into in the community, the, the more you realize there's not a whole lot of us here. You know, we're all, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty tight-knit group, yeah. It's pretty small. A lot smaller than you think. As an artist, is it, is it real, is there a lot of pressure knowing that 
you're taking a needle and placing permanent ink on someone's body and that you can't take an eraser and, like, erase it? Like, is that a, is that a ton of pressure, you know, Absolutely. even off the phone? <clears throat> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we lose sleep about things that we've done. The people, you know, making sure, hoping it's going to heal right because, you know, with paper, you know what it's going to look like immediately with a tattoo. you got to wait for that shit to heal. Then you got to wait for the skin to go over it and what it's going to look like through their light skin or dark skin or if they went in the sun and, you know, things like that. So you never really know what your tattoo is going to look like until you see that bitch walk back through the door two weeks later, you know, a month later. Um, and you don't always get that. So it's it's a little tough, yeah, because you, you wonder, God, am I doing this right? You know, uh, <laughs> as you're doing it, it's like, okay, this 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 is going to heal great. And then it's like, oh, fuck, but you healed like shit. What did I do wrong, you know? And, and that's the thing. I try to hold myself accountable. So if I see something come back unhappy or if I catch an email or a phone call and somebody's less than pleased, I'm just beside myself because I... I would, my name of my shop is Chapel of Love. I invest love in everything I do, you know. So when when that shit goes wrong, I feel like I have let that client down. So yeah, there's there's tons of pressure, tons and tons of pressure. But you just have to regulate it and don't be a pussy, you know. Like you just <laughs> know it's the same shit you've been doing every day, you know. Just just do it right, and you won't have to worry about it. So. I think some customers don't even think about that because honestly, when I go into a tattoo, I you know, a tattoo shop, and I'm, I look at books and I do my research. I didn't look at my first couple tattoos, and right. even now, as a person who has tattoos, all of my tattoos have a story. But just because they have a story doesn't mean they were done well. And yeah. now I know, <laughs> unfortunately, and uh, I, I do have a couple cover ups I need done, but. Uh, sure. You know, unfortunately, you know, I, I wish I knew then what I know now because now I go in and I research. I, I, I look for a portfolio. You know, if they don't have a portfolio of their work, I, I tend to say, thanks anyway, I'm just, you know, looking. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you really do have to be careful. But when I do find a really good tattooist, one that I, I feel that their work is accurate enough, and I don't mean to say this in a snobby way at all, no. but, you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I feel you. I agree with you. We're just acting up into what I feel that they're going to make me happy and do justice to what I want. I feel kind of bad because I'll get in the chair and I'm like, I just want to remind you, this is going to be on for the rest of my life. No pressure. <laughs> I am done. No pressure. I'm just saying that this is forever. Just saying. And like, they just look at me. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, are you is the question. And they're like, I don't know now. I'm like, Okay, then. I'm going to give you some time. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's the thing. If you're really that unsure at the time you're sitting in the chair, you know, you've got to make sure that you're you're sitting in the right chair. Uh, I always tell people, you know, if you're not sure what you want to get, don't try and come to an artist with your tattoo idea. Mm -hmm. Find your artist. Find the yep. artist. Find the person you click with. Find the person that you... When you sit down, you don't even have to worry about asking them if they're okay, because you already know. <laughs> and that's a hard thing. That's a really hard thing to charge someone, because, you know, then they're like, oh, shit, how do I do that? Or what if I don't find them? You know, I want to yeah. get tattooed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, you know, and I actually, I've also learned a lot from other people's, I guess I want to say stupidity. I had a coworker who was in Miami, Florida, and that's when Miami Inc. was really huge with the whole Ami James thing. Yeah. And she walked into Miami Inc. and talked to Ami James and goes, I want a tattoo. And she was like, well, what do you want? She goes, I don't care. I just want to be tattooed by you because you're famous. And at least he was smart enough to go, yeah, I don't suck. You know, he's yeah. like, a really dumb reason to get tattooed. And she came back and she was all pissed about it. I'm like, she did you a favor. Like, yep. she could have literally just scribbled lines on you and said, well, here, because I'm famous, here you go. But she did you a freaking favor. And so I was like, okay, now I know what not to do. Now I know why I have my tattoos and why some people shouldn't have them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that, that kind of rolls into the whole thing that I just tell people. It's like, well, I'm not here to give you the tattoo that's meaningful 
I'm not here to give you the tattoo that you want to get right now. I'm here to give you the tattoo that you're going to want on your body.